talked a little bit about uh, wind and solar, but I really want to kind of dig deep into wind and solar and analyze basically what does wind and solar really pose for the Middle East? Um, is there a bubble with wind and solar? Are they being pushed and lobbied by, you know, you know, by uh, certain groups in the West because of the incentives and the subsidy models, et cetera? Or is it really what it's ought to be? Well, very timely that, that you ask this. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny. I was actually at DWA today talking to them about solar Which panels. makes you think of wind and solar. Um, well, being at DWA. Yeah. Uh, well, I was there talking about solar. That's, why, that's, that's where the link comes from. But, you know, as an oil, you know, I'm an oil and gas guy, right? So I come at wind and solar with no, uh, well, I'd like to have no prejudices. I mean, I hope I'm not prejudiced against them. But, but at least I, I'm, I, I'm not in this kind of you know, rah-rah mode that, well, yeah, we must have, have this kind of green energy and isn't it great and, and so on. Um, but actually, you know, when I look at the numbers, I, I find it more and more compelling, I've got to say, particularly in, in the Middle East when you look at solar power. You're not telling us what happened at Dewa. <laughs> what, what happened at Dewa was I went to Dewa and I told them that solar power looks very attractive and, and economically competitive and it looks better than oil. That's what I told what them. What they say? And they said, hmm, well, we had a study a few years ago that found it was very expensive, and, but we're looking at it and we have some plans. And so, you know, there's a big mindset thing here. I mean, I think the mindset has always been that solar is expensive. And yeah, if it's in Germany, where you know it's not the sunniest place in the world, and, and actually you need the electricity in the middle of middle of winter at night, you know, solar in, in that kind of climate makes less sense. In a climate like this, you know, solar makes great sense. Very sunny. You need air conditioning in the middle of the day, in the middle of summer when you have the sun shining. Michael, are you a fan of solar and wind? Well, I, I think in in theory, uh, yes, absolutely. And I think. How about in practice? Um, I think that here, as Robin says, if it makes sense anywhere, here is the place. And you know, just look at the numbers. That um, if you look at the um, uh, electricity generating capacity here, what 18 gigawatts, and it's forecast to um, the demand is forecast to to be at 40 gigawatts by um, 2020. Now, there's the big nuclear program. Even if you accept that that's a good thing and that it will arrive on time, that'll only provide a little over five gigawatts. So that's about a quarter of the extra capacity that um, the authorities here project that they'll need. Now, these are projections, and you know things can change, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But it does show that. Um, um, something as big is needed to fill that gap and if it's more gas that's going to be very expensive and increasingly um, uh, an increasingly insecure way of doing things therefore you've got to look in different directions um, the sun is here so solar seems a, a logical way to look at this okay well then michael don't want to talk about wind no, but you <laughs> and I'm full of wind. No, Michael. Um, Michael said uh, that, that Robert is really the expert. I'm the oil and gas person, and I, I cover the politics of oil and How gas. About your but you but my prejudice, no, no. I mean, I have I have a child. I want to see him and his grandchildren live in a, in a in a world where the ice caps aren't breaking and and where we are conserving our energies and where we are using solar and we're using you know any any and geothermal, which uh, where my son is in Canada at the moment, they use it quite quite a lot, but. It's, you know, it's not something that's available everywhere. I was reading, I think it was EFT, or I was on a plane, which is what I sort of spend most of my life doing, and the, uh, it was about uh, battery-operated cars and how they wouldn't really work here. You know, something to the effect that if, it, you know, if they start making Ferraris that run on, um, on and then SUVs that run on batteries, they'll, they'll, they'll go. But um, I'm finding, I think, it's all very well to put these policies and you say, yeah, oh, Philippine in 10 years, well, maybe use your firm. But there's always things that happen that sort of uh, you derail you a little bit. So, for example, Fukushima came out of nowhere and that slowed down. Germany, yes, is going to now be developing shale gas. Um, they've, they've, they've put a stop to their nuclear um, program. They're going to be doing the same in Poland. Uh, they've banned it in France because they've got enough nuclear anyway and they can sell it to others. But I mean, the point is that you have something that happens. You don't even know the technology that's going to be available 10 or 20 years from now. Um, so it's very, very difficult. And then you have Fukushima. We were on radio just after that and, and we were saying, you know, I was saying, I project that we're going to be using more coal. We're going to be burning more coal because you're going to have to find an alternative, more gas. And we've seen it already, you know, Qatar, which had all these cargoes they couldn't sell. Suddenly they go to Asia and mostly to Japan. And uh, there was a trader sitting with us on the radio. He says, "You know what? I'd actually rather be dirty than than dead." So you know, we've got a balance. Tweet that, please. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not my words, but uh, I think there's a you know, for me, here's a dramatic difference between you know, this part of the world and you know, maybe China and so on as well, and the West. You know, we should just get back to the NIMBY problem, right? The problem, the not, yeah. in, not in my backyard syndrome. 
you know, we don't want oil and gas because they're dirty and, and they, they cause climate change and so on. We don't want coal, and that's dirty too. We don't want nuclear because that's kind of dangerous. We don't want wind because it's noisy and it affects the whales. Um, there was the, the solar plant in, in Arizona where it was in the breeding ground of a rare turtle. I mean, a, a tortoise or something. I mean, this is a true story. So there was an environmental protest against this solar plant in, in Arizona. I mean, you know, in the end, well, you know, you, you want to press the switch and you want the lights to come on. It's got to come on somehow, right? I mean, uh, unfortunately, all these energy sources have their, their, their strengths and their weaknesses. And, and in the end, you've got to make some hard choices on, on saying, well, you know, we, we accept that there will be some environmental impact from whatever we do, whichever energy source we choose. Is there questions? Yeah, a question to uh, Robin Michael Backfish, Financial Times Deutschland. You said solar technology is a realistic option. And how far is economic pressure a trigger for the development of solar technology? Take Saudi Arabia. The Saudis are burning 25% uh, burning of their oil. Uh, domestic energy demand will double uh, within 10 years, from 40 gigawatt to roughly 80 gigawatt. Um, and how far is, is that uh, the reason why they really have to accelerate solar technology? And if so, I mean, so far there are some scattered projects, but not a, a real uh, coherent solar strategy. So how should it work in tech? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the economic rationale for solar in the Gulf and for Saudi's solar plans yeah, you know, it is 100% it is economics and 0% environment. I mean, yeah, I'm sure, you know, they might put a few panels on a roof for an environmental reason, but they're talking about huge plans for solar power. Uh, and that is for economic reasons. Exactly as you say, they're burning an increasing amount of their own oil to generate electricity. Electricity demand is soaring. They're faced with the, the prospect of, of their expo oil exports being cut. So they need alternative sources of energy. And they're looking at nuclear power and they're looking at solar power. So absolutely economic reasons. Now, can they deliver those programs on time? I'm a bit more skeptical. 